today is the wonderful feast day of this great saint, Saint Francis, and everybody recognizes Saint Francis. Everybody knows at least a little about Saint Francis. They know kind of those those token things. They they know that he was poor, or that they know that he uh, that he was generous to the poor, or they know that he had the stigmata, or they know that he uh, liked animals and they put a statue in their garden. Uh, you know, there's very general kind of concepts of St. Francis. And all of those things that we know of him, you know, that he found in the Franciscan order, and the, uh, these things all contributed to his sanctity. But I don't think it gets to really the crux of the matter of his sanctity. You see, what really makes him such a great saint is, in a way, tied in, like we were talking last night about St. Therese, is that his immediate turning to do God's will. He never hesitated at all in doing so. You know, we see that he was born of, of, of a family of means. He is uh, a, a soldier in the army and all of these things. That he, was, he had a, a career that was a successful one in the making. And he was going to live a comfortable and, and successful life. And, you know, nothing wrong with that. But God had other plans for him. And so God calls him to this life and asks him to, to re restore his church. And so he leaves all things behind. He, he takes off and starts to serve God immediately. And he thinks, actually, it's so immediate that it's almost like, it's almost like he didn't even wait around to figure out the, to hear the rest of God's message in it because God tells him to restore my church and he goes and starts to rebuild the physical church in the town. And, um, and it's only afterwards that God tells him again that no, this is what I mean to reform the, the church from within. And he, you know, he rejects all of his wealth and all of his, 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 uh, his, his inheritance from his father immediately to, to leave all things behind and follow our Lord. It's so much so that he takes the very clothes off his back and gives them to his father in the middle of the street, not even waiting to find some sort of place at the shelter to, to, to strip himself of these garments. He just takes it off and throws it to, to him so he could follow our Lord. And when he's called upon to found a new, new order, he doesn't wait around for, for this. He, he immediately starts living that life himself of absolute poverty, of absolute charity. And when he's called to, uh, to do any things along the way, there's ne we never see in St. Francis a hesitation whatsoever. In, in everything that he does, he does it immediately. And that includes, first off, all the good things that he did in all of the, the, the works of, of, of virtue. He never hesitates. But also, in his turning away from what is evil, temptations that, that, that would come to him, he would immediately turn away. He didn't want it even to get the slightest of, of, of ground on his soul. He wanted to cast it away before he could even have the chance to, to be able to entertain it. He, and we see this most strongly in when St. Francis was tempted in the way of the flesh. You know, he had this temptation come upon him against the flesh. And he saw by the roadside that he was on this bush of brambles, of, of thorns. And without hesitation... He dives into the thorns and begins to roll around in the thorns until those temp that temptation is gone from him. His body is being assaulted by temptations towards unjust pleasure, so he punishes it 
in order to take away even the slightest thought of giving in to those temptations. Now, of course, that is something that you don't, you know, I don't sit here and recommend that all of you go out and start diving into, into thorn bushes. But that spirit of it, that idea of not even waiting a second to turn from what is tempting towards what is necessary in, in God, that we, every instant that we have, we're always looking for the opportunity to turn to him immediately, without hesitation, without compromise, without trying to play both sides of that aisle. We follow that pathway, because that's what makes saints, like we talked about last night, that's what makes these people such great saints, is that they turn to God's will in the big and in the small things, that they themselves are humble, that they go and do whatever is God's will in their lives, regardless of what they had planned out for themselves, regardless of what they think is the best course of action. They know if God is on one side of that choice, that is the best course of action, the godly way. And we see that in the life of St. Francis, and we have to look to ourselves in our lives how much do we imitate this great saint? Or I should say, how little do we imitate this great saint? Because really, all of us fall short. That's, you know, that's why we have the confession. That's why it's there for us, because we need it. But how can we grow in that way? We, we look to ourselves. You know, how, how can I be more humble? I'll, I have to not always be looking to myself for the answer. I must not always be listening to my own voice in instruction, but rather I need to be thinking of what is it that God wants me to do and how is he going to voice that to me. Perhaps it's from a source that we don't even expect it to come from, or perhaps it's a source that we see and know that we should listen to, but we are hesitant to do so because it makes us uncomfortable or it's, you know, or it's against what our natural inclination would be. It doesn't matter. Our humility is wanted from God. Or perhaps God desires of us to stand up and to, uh, to be the first one to, to come and volunteer to do extra devotions for reparation for sins. You know, to, to be the ones to, to take that extra hour of adoration, like coming up, you will hear tomorrow announced in more in depth, we will have, for the first time here at St. Hugh, 40 hours devotion in November. And so there will be this great opportunity for, for Eucharistic adoration. You know, perhaps God wants you to come and sacrifice a little bit of extra of your time and make a little more effort to be here and visit the Blessed Sacrament. Or perhaps He wants us to have to fight hard against temptations in our lives. Perhaps he wants us to, to scrape away every little inch of the spiritual life we can by, by really hard effort. Maybe we will be assailed often by temptations. And he wants us to gain merits by rejecting it. We don't realize that how great of sacrifice that is by just turning away from simple temptation, which we know to be wrong, that not only are we doing what we have to do in that occasion, but God is so generous to us because we do so that he rewards us with great graces for turning away from those temptations to not even give that, that little instant of gratification or of, of, of entertainment with us, but to, to, to recognize it for what it is. It is contrary to God and to push it as far away as possible immediately. So... Think of that. Last night's sermon, for those of you who are here about St. Therese, and today's sermon with St. Francis, that we recognize that, that that constant turning towards God, that, you know, the, as the, the Benedictines would say, that they, uh, they actually uh, make it part of their rule of that, of that conversion of life daily, that they always are turning towards God each and every single day in their lives. It's, it's most important for us to constantly keep before us that we are always in a state of conversion, always in a state of growth, 
always in a state of trying to get to that next step in our spiritual life. And by taking that next step, each and every opportunity we have, then one day too, we will finally come to the end of that journey, which is salvation in heaven. And God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.